Hello out there. I'm doing shelf number six. So we'll get through the I's and K's and shit. Or at least start on them. What? Yeah. Okay. Shelf number six. First up, I Am Legend. This was actually based on a true story. For those of you who think that's true, it isn't. Either way, Will Smith, last man on earth. If you could choose who you wanted to be the last guy to represent the human race, I would pick Will Smith too. Um, either way, this is a cool uh, science fiction story. It's very elegantly shot with all the empty landscapes in New York City and stuff. It's uh, I like the fact that they kept the sadder ending because I've, I've watched the um, alternate ending and I'm glad they actually kept the, the more depressing one because usually Hollywood big budget studios always go for feel good happy endings. I'm glad they went the other way with this one. Um, I haven't watched any of the special features. I hear there's like a cool 50 minute documentary type thing on there. But either way, Will Smith with a dog, one man show, one dog show. Uh, a very good performance by Will Smith. One to check out if you haven't seen. Uh, well, this one a lot of people haven't seen. It's The Ides of March. The fact that Ryan Gosling didn't get a nomination for this or Drive or it, last year at the Academy kind of pissed me off. But either way, the guy's got some fucking talent. And uh, the other person who has some talent is George Clooney behind the camera. He's actually a pretty damn good director. Uh, but either way, this was just... A movie you don't see that often nowadays. It's like a tight political espionage thriller type thing. And it's it's really exceptionally well written. And I just... See, this... Me saying really well exceptionally, that's just dumb in, in and of myself. So don't pin this film as that. This is a very smart film. Um, and just a damn powerhouse cast. Um... So definitely check this out if you haven't seen it. It's it's pretty cool. Ah, uh, I love you, man. Rashida Jones, she's just so damn cute. She should be in more things. But either way, Jason Siegel, Paul Rudd have just this amazing chemistry. Basically, a uh, concept of a guy doesn't have any best male friends. He's always been, like, female friend oriented. So he needs a best man for his wedding. And so he just goes out looking for bros to hang out with. And it's pretty damn funny because they have amazing chemistry, as I said before. Lou Ferrigno's funny in here as himself. Uh, one to check out if you haven't seen. This one here kind of got overshadowed. It's The Illusionist. I've already professed my love for Edward Norton. Uh, the Illusionist came out the exact same year, like within a month or two of The Prestige, Christopher Nolan. And that movie's uh, fucking epic too but this one i feel like it just kind of got lost people didn't really care too much about it because the other one but this one the, the other one just kind of you know raised itself over this one cast in a shadow but this one uh, had a pretty cool ending as well and just great performances very lavish production design because it's supposed to be you know victorian england i think if it's not don't stab me i don't know either way it's very regal looking it and then uh, are these rich deep colors that look nice on the tv so um but it, it like it's about a magician and that's why i think the obvious comparisons get raised but they're two very different movies and this one's very good as well a movie that's not that good and i was bored to fucking tears during it's immortals i saw the trailer for this and thought oh, it could be kind of cool i like the whole renaissance painting thing that went on in there and shit and I knew it was going to be a rip off of 300 because, I mean, pretty much any Swords and Sandals type movie is in essence. But I, I, you can't say that, you know what I mean? So I, w I wanted to give it a chance, and it's just boring as shit. Half the time, I don't know what's going on. There's really not a plot. And, I mean, yeah, the visuals look cool. And the last 20 minutes saved me from... Th I was going to just, like, throw this out. I wasn't going to throw it out the window. I was going to keep it. But either way, because I'm a sick person. Um, but the last 20 minutes save it. The last 20 minutes are really cool. Um, but I mean, everything, the hour and 40 minutes that come before, it's just boring, you know? There's not a lot of, a even action, really. I mean, it's just people kind of doing stupid shit. The cool thing is you get to see Frida Pinto's ass. That's cool. It's, uh, the, the chick from Slumdog Millionaire and Rise of the Planet of the Apes. But like I said, it's just, eh, whatever. I was disappointed. A movie that I was not fucking disappointed with one of my favorite films of the last 10 years it's inception i love this goddamn movie tom hardy leonardo DiCaprio, joseph gordon levitt juno just a brilliant concept and so brilliantly executed by a fucking mastermind chris nolan i can't wait for dark knight rises um you know just 
a movie that you can't just see once. You have to get this. If you don't have this, you should get this just to watch, rewatch it. And experience. It's a new experience every goddamn time because you just pick up on all this other stuff that you're just like, I'm stupid for not realizing that. But just a great movie. A movie that's just as smart as Inception. Just as brilliant as Inception. Just a cornerstone of the science fiction market and a true piece of masterwork cinema. It's Independence Day. I can't even say that with a straight face. Either way, no. Independence Day is big, dumb fun. We've talked about Roland Emmerich before and how he's just a fucking, you know, it's pretty much just like, ah, oh, special effects, ah, oh, anger and flames and shit flying. Either way, Independence Day, you got, I mean, you gotta like it. Uh, just for the sheer audacity and batshit craziness of it all. It's got a cool cast. Bill Pullman, Jeff... When you say Jeff Goldblum and Will Smith in the same sentence together, automatically you should be like, I'd see that movie. But either way, um, you know, just cheesy, dumb fun. And you gotta like it. Uh, Inglorious Bastards. I'm a huge fan of Tarantino. This one's a, a really good one. Uh, I mean, it's a little long and a little slow in parts here, but when it focuses on the bastards or... Uh, the uh, Christoph Waltz's character, who's the MVP of this movie, you know, it is absolutely riveting, and uh, I mean, this, this some of this stuff is fucking brutal. You know, the stuff with the bear Jew, which is played by Eli Eli Roth, who's the director of Hostel and Hostel Two, and Cabin Fever. Um, you know, Tarantino has such a knack for this pulp, pulpy type, you know, neo noirish, stylish type film, and it, I. The dialogue is really what drives it, but this is one where he starts, he's starting to get, with each movie as he goes on, he's starting to get really, really impressive with his visuals, and I think this one really um, interprets that well. I mean, it's not one of my favorite, it's not my favorite by him, but it, it's a damn good movie. Um, check it out if you haven't seen it. This movie a lot of people haven't seen, hasn't seen, and um, I went to theaters to see this really not expecting much. I was kind of dreading the entire experience because when you say PG-13 horror movie, I automatically get angry not because there aren't good pg-13 horror movies there are a couple here and there but most of them just fucking suck especially when they deal with the supernatural they're just terrible but this one i really enjoyed it's insidious it's got for one the one of the best things that it's got going for it, it's got actors not these fucking douchey teenager teeny bop bastards who can't say a line without winking i don't know what that means but either way, Patrick Wilson and Rose Byrne actually like are actors and they're good at acting. And this was by James Wan and written by Lee Wan L, the same two guys who brought the first and best Saw movie. Um, and this was just had a cool premise, you know, a kid who goes into a coma and he has the ability to leave his body, you know, subconsciously, and he winds up getting lost out into the, you know, this other world, and his father has to go get him. But it's such a, I mean, when you describe it, it's got such cool visuals and truly frightening moments in it not just like where they use you know allow to, to scare you there are those in there here and there but um you know it it builds its suspense naturally and and it earns it you know what i mean it's not just a it's not fake quick ones here and there it, it earns every bit of it it's pretty damn cool you should check it out um well probably my least well one of my least favorite movies by chris nolan but that doesn't mean it's not a damn good movie it's insomnia uh, with Robin Williams, Al Pacino, and Hilary Swank. Um, you know, this was just one of those cool, eerie, noir, you know, film thrillers. It's uh, set in Alaska. It's got some pretty cool uh, scenery here and there. But, I mean, the best parts of this is Robin Williams' creepy-ass fucking performance as a serial killer in this. Uh, spoiler alert! No, but <laughs> pretty much you know that within, you know, the first while. It's not any secret to it. But, uh, it's, uh... He does pretty damn good at, at creepy stuff, too. Like this and One Hour Photo and stuff. I came out, you know, relatively close to each other. But either way, Insomnia. It's a pretty good movie. I haven't seen this one yet. Danielle got this. It's uh, Angelina. When I heard Angelina Jolie was directing a movie, I was like, why? But either way, it's In the Land of Blood and Honey. I saw the preview for it. It actually doesn't look too bad. Then I heard it was subtitled, and I hate reading. What am I? What am I? What an asshole I am! Like foreign films, I can't watch because I can't read. No, I, I do watch. I do watch some here and there, and I I enjoy them. To be honest, let's just be honest with each other. They have more creativity half the time than we do here in America. 
Um, but yeah, this one uh, is uh, subtitled, dubbed, not dubbed, I hate dubbed, but uh, yeah, it's about, it's a, just pretty much kind of a war epic between, uh, about Starcross lovers, like I said, I haven't seen it yet, so I can't say too much about it. I've heard mixed reviews, she enjoyed it, but I heard it's pretty depressing, but either way, for what it's worth. The next one up is In Time. With JT, Justin Timberlake, and Amanda Seyfried. Can we, can we, who, people who have seen the movie, why is her name listed first? She is not the title character. She's not the main character. Why is her name listed first? And let's be, who, does anyone know Amanda Seyfried or Justin Timberlake? Who, who's a more recognizable name? Either way, whatever. Um, in Time had a badass pre uh, concept, in my opinion. It's kind of lacklusterly delivered. It, it, don't get me wrong. It, it is a good movie. It's a solid B movie. But it's just... You know, I, I feel like it was such a cool concept. There could have been so much more that they did with it. But for, for the most part, yeah, I mean, it's decently enough acted. It's got some uh, pretty cool visuals here and there. Basically, the premise of you're born with and you die. You're born... How long is it? 25 years? 20 years? 25. You stop aging when you're 25 years old. You have, a, like, a little... Um, clock on your fore, forearm that uh, says how long you have left and you work to get more time. Everything, the currency in this country is time-based. Um, but there's some pretty cool social aspects. that I mean, it's pretty much one big allegory for, you know, the 1% and how what we're dealing with right now on Wall Street and all that shit. So, And it's not very shy about saying that. It's not some subtext that you have to read into. It's pretty much right on the goddamn forefront. But either way, it's a pretty good movie. I was imp very impressed with this. The first time I saw it, I was kind of indifferent, and then I watched it again, and I really latched on to a lot of the concepts it presented. It's Into the Wild. Um, Sean Penn directed this. It's got a very good cast. Emile Hirsch, who re we really hadn't seen in too much other than like Alpha Dog and uh, The Girl Next Door and stuff, really gets a chance to like act here, and he's a very good actor. Such breathtaking visuals, the landscapes and uh, you know the rivers and mountains, and everywhere he goes... Basically, I read the book back in high school, Into the Wild, um, basically about this guy, Christopher McCandless, McCandless, yes, who, um, you know, who just drops everything, says, fuck life, and I'm going to go live out in the wilderness, but, you know, he's naive, and a lot of bad shit winds up happening to him, but it's got such a, you know, a, a very good supporting characters, too. Hal Holbrook delivers a great performance, Vince Vaughn, uh, Marsha Gay Harden, Catherine Kinnear, William Hurt, but either way... Um, just a big, I mean, it's long, it's a big movie about a character, a central character who literally drives the entire film, love him or hate him, um, it's, it's a very powerful film. Uh, again, Will Smith, you keep coming up, buddy, and you do for a reason. I, Robot, uh, I love this movie when it came out, I was like, at the exact age when this movie was probably targeting, I was like 12, 13 when this first came out, and I loved every goddamn minute of it. Um, I still love it since. Uh, I haven't seen it on Blu-ray, though, so I can't tell you too much about the picture quality. But um, I can't imagine it being anything less than stellar. I, I, the special effects, from what I can remember, were really good in this movie. The robot, who was actually done by Alan Tudyk, or Tudyk, um, who was in, like, Tucker and Dale vs. Evil and A Knight's Tale, the red-haired guy from Serenity and shit. Um, that's what I was, it blew, blew me away when I found that out, because I really didn't recognize him. But either way, just uh, pretty much, you know the concept of if robots were our slaves or our servants and what could happen if they wound up overturning us. Basically, just just a you know, way to riff on our dependence on technology. Um, we got the Avengers coming out this year. It's Iron Man and Iron Man 2. Um, Iron Man's definitely the superior film, but I mean, a lot of people hated Iron Man 2, and I didn't, I didn't think it was that bad, you know what I mean? Um, it's definitely not as good as, as Iron Man, that's for sure. But either way, um, Iron Man reintroduced us to Robert Downey Jr. It was a huge gamble for them to put him in this movie because he hadn't been in anything for a while and he, he wasn't much of a box office draw. I'm so glad he did because he fit this role perfectly. Um, I wish Terrence Howard had been back for the second one, but I heard he was a big dick and wanted more money than Robert Downey Jr. or some shit, so they were like, ah, fuck you, we'll just get Don Cheadle. And like Don, I can't complain because Don Cheadle's a fine actor. Third one's coming out soon. Um, you know, I, I applaud them for choosing real actors for their villains. You know, Jeff Bridges in this one and Mickey Rourke in the second one. You know, just pretty damn 
they're fun movies, you know. I, I, I it's, they're not movies that I watch again and again and again, but they're they are one of those superhero movies that I feel like I can watch more than one because they're they're um they're funny too along with it. Uh, this, in my opinion, was one of Michael Bay's better films, and I know people are gonna be like, "Well, that what the fuck does that mean?" That's like saying this piece of trash is better than that piece of trash. But either way, it's the island. A lot of people haven't seen this. This was his, like, one box office dud. It just died at the box office. And it cost, like, $150 million to make. It only made, like, 40 But um, those numbers are completely inaccurate. I have no idea. But <laughs> it's, it's around there, I know. It lost quite a bit of money. I do know that. But uh, this was a cool concept movie where, you know, there's this whole colony of clones. All these rich people have their clones made in case anything happens to them. You know, they get liver disease or something. They can just call upon their clone to give them there. So the clones are raised, you know, to perfection. They have, like, a certain amount of calories they're allowed to eat. And they exercise this many times a day. And it's just, it's, it's a cool concept. I really like that. And um, it's got some really cool action set pieces. Um, Scarlett Johansson really can't act in this movie. And I'm not saying she's not a bad actress now. Um, but in this movie, she's really, I, I don't know, she just felt out of place. Or she was just screaming every line maybe she was the Shia LaBeouf of this movie but either way she's fucking gorgeous to look at so who cares but either way um out of his movies I think this one's the smartest like what does that mean you know what I mean uh speaking of smart intelligent movies it's Jackass 3 this one I, re I really like this one um uh, the other ones haven't come out on blu-ray I probably won't get those ones on blu-ray I have them on dvd but um this one actually warranted the, the Blu-ray because, I mean, they actually, with the camera they use, I can't remember what the hell it was called. Why would it say it? I'm looking on the back like it'll say that. But either way, um, the camera they use, Phantom? Was it Phantom? I don't know. Either way, it, it shoots such high shutter speed that, you know, the images that it creates, these crisp, clear, slow motion images were, are pretty cool and pretty stunning, to be honest. Um... <laughs> just the intricacies of like a tennis ball being thrown at a ball sack in slow motion that looks kind of cool either way um you know a lot of people hate these movies a lot of people love these movies I'm, i kind of i like them i think they're funny I, I laugh at them and that's the bottom line um there's no absolutely no plot or story or rhyme or reason but they are funny um jackie brown this probably is my least favorite Tarantino movie. Um, that, that being said, I, I like it. I really like it. Um, just a pretty good cast. He was right, coming right off of Pulp Fiction, and I, the, this one kind of didn't do as well, obviously, because you're following Pulp Fiction with anything is really not going to look that good in comparison. But, I mean, this was a fun movie. Uh, the best part, in my opinion, is the parts with uh, uh, Samuel Jackson and Chris Tucker with the car. That's, that's my favorite part. But, uh, you know, just bunch of people chasing money um this was the one movie that he didn't write off an original idea it's based off of an elmore leonard novel so i think that's why it kind of loses his voice here and there but either way it's a good movie uh this movie i heard pretty negative reviews for the most part i heard it was contrived and terrible makeup and stuff like that it's jay edgar starring dicaprio um dicaprio really works with some fucking powerhouse directors you know what i mean chris nolan uh, Clint Eastwood for this one, uh, Scorsese, however many times, you know, it's, it's he never picks people who are just kind of up, new and comer, up and comer type people, you know, Danny Boyle for the beach, and either way, I'm running off on a tangent here, either way, uh, J. Edgar, I didn't think it was that bad, to be honest, I thought it was a pretty decent biopic, um, it does jump around so much, though, but the weird thing was, is that I was able to follow where it was going, literally, they, it just keeps jumping from here to there, and you got to follow it. But I, I really felt like I could follow it easily, um, and that's what a lot of the complaints were. Another complaint was Army Hammer, uh, the dude, the, the Winklevoss twin from, uh, from the Social Network. They said that his makeup was really terrible, and uh, after watching this, I it is. It he looks like a man in an old man mask. Um, uh, but I mean that's a that's kind of a minor quibble. Um, quibble. That's a fun word. Either way, uh, you know, DiCaprio delivers a powerhouse performance. It's uh, it's a pretty good biopic. It's nothing great, not award-worthy, but it, it's a good movie. 
Um, I haven't seen this on Blu-ray yet. It's Juno. Uh, I haven't seen this in a while, actually. But, I, I, you know, just a charming performance from Ellen Page. Uh, a weirdly written screenplay by Diablo. Jesus Christ, I can't talk anymore. Screenplay by Diablo Cody. Um, that won the best original screenplay. Just a, a girl from a, an unwanted teenage pregnancy and how she deals with it. It's, um... You know, it's charming, it's funny, it's kind of sweet in places. It's just one of those flicks that a guy could enjoy, too, you know. Um, the Jurassic Park Ultimate Trilogy. That warranted it, all right? The voice warrants it. All three of the films, first one's obviously the absolute best film. One of the best science fiction films of all time, in my opinion. I know I'm stretching it. I, I envy the people who were able to see this for the first time in theaters because that must have been such a fucking rewarding experience to see shit that, you know, you had never seen before on screen. That's such an amazing thing. I wish I, I, wish I could have seen it in theaters. I'm sure they'll do some sort of goddamn post-conversion 3D thing and it'll be out in five years anyway, so I'll probably get the chance. But either way, The Lost World, eh. Jurassic Park 3, eh. Um, like I said, the first one's an amazing film. The second one, you know kind of follows that and just kind of throws out a lot of story the third one's literally just an excuse to show off the the, the effects joe johnston uh directed it i mean and you know that's not necessarily a bad thing because the first one and the second one was over long and this one was like too short because it was just like action 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 um but either way they all three of them feature amazing special effects the first one by far is better than the other two combined but, that, I mean, the other ones aren't... They're fun to watch here and there. They're just not, you know, this epic grand film like the, that, that the first one was. Uh, we talked about Adam Sandler a little before. It's just go with it. I hadn't seen this. I took a gamble and bought it. You know, it's not as bad as everyone was saying it was, in, in my opinion. Um, there are a couple laughs here and there. It's definitely not as bad as Jack... I, well, I haven't seen Jack and Jill, but I can't imagine it being as bad as Jack and Jill. It's about there with grown-ups. You know, it's take it or leave it. It's all right. A lot of beautiful women in swimsuits so that's kind of cool but um you know and nick swartzen's kind of funny as his right hand man funny guy but either way it's yeah all right to wrap this one up last one on this shelf it's kick ass um we've seen this concept explored earlier with films like mystery men but this is the first time that it was ultra violent and fucking in your face i like that about it and uh this is the best film nick cage has starred in in like 10 years but either way um the real person, the person who steals the, the show is Chloe Grace Moretz. Chloe Grace Moretz, yes. Um, her freaking hit girl is just absolutely psychotic. And, um, you know, the fact that they can unabashedly introduce violence in children and, and marry them with such, you know, zeal. I like that word? Um, is uh, not revolutionary, but it, it's just w warranted. I like that. I like the fact that you can be so over the top and bloody and still have a fun time watching it. It's not one of those depressing, ultra-violent films. That's what I like about it. Uh, great cast all around. Uh, great direction from, um, what is it? Hang on. It's Matthew Vaughn, who wound up going on to do the uh, X-Men. The new X-Men. Uh... Oh, shit. What the hell was it called? First Class. Jesus Christ, I suck. But either way, kick ass if you haven't seen it. Check it out. That's all for this one. I'll see you guys later.